This video is protein transport vesicle budding. To start off, so vesicle budding is the process of a membrane receiving cargo at cargo receptors and then using other proteins such as clathrin and others to form a vesicle and to quote unquote bud off from the membrane. The bud itself is growing um, in this kind of bold shape and culminates in the formation of a separate vesicle. And so you can see that there are other proteins here, lots of different color-coded ones, um, which we'll hear in more detail. Here's a little more stylized picture looking at vesicle budding. And basically, this is not from your textbook. It's from this awesome website, learngenetics.utah.edu. Uh, and basically, what we see here is the same sort of process, that there's a little bud that starts to form. And this is made possible by some proteins which start to form around this bud area. They look... Um, a lot like kind of throwing stars, this gold little trimer looking thing. Um, and these actually are made up of clathrin. Um, so many different clathrin um, units are going to be brought together uh, to hold together this vesicle. We call the vesicle then, um, as this process continues from left to right, um, a coated vesicle. And again, this is due to a protein coat, um, which here we see is all clathrin, this kind of gold color. But there are many different sorts of protein coats that are possible, and most vesicles will have some sort of a protein coat. The other thing to know about this is that the protein coat is temporary. So it helps the vesicle to form initially, but then that protein coat is removed. And sometimes that's called shedding um, of the protein coat. Just as a clarification, so uh, clathrin is the name of this most common protein coat, which you should know, uh, which sounds a little bit like claritin, not the same, um, but this is a, a decongestant, which you may or may not be familiar with. This is just a way to maybe help you remember it, but do you notice that it's spelled differently, and you should be able to spell it as clathrin, not claritin. Uh, kind of fun fact for you, so... In 1964, there was one of the first reports of these protein coats, um, in particular of clathrin, and that was in mosquito oocytes, which are a egg cell in mosquitoes. So I mentioned that there were some different protein coats, um, and I just put for fun a couple different coats over here. Uh, just like you might um, have a couple different coats in your closet, or you might just have one. I usually have one that I wear everywhere, but at any rate, in theory, I might have several different coats in my closet, and which coat that I pick out to wear on a certain day um, might depend on the temperature as well as the occasion. And so um, if I were going to go do some sporting events, I might wear um, a very sporty coat, like this looks like for hunting. There are certainly other ones that could be used for skiing or snowboarding or being out in a rainforest. Um, or windy weather, and then another coat that might be more for out in, out in the town or just out and around on campus. And so that's the same case for vesicles, that which coat that the, um, which, which coat is around the vesicle depends on the destination. And so basically that will determine the destination. Um, so this is a table from your textbook, table 15-4. Notice that they uh, mentioned some clathrin-coated vesicles, and they've got some extra details here, which we're mostly going to um, ignore. But notice that, um, depending on these details, that they can have a different origin and a different destination uh, for clathrin. Um, in addition, you can see that there's another major sort of protein coat called COP. That stands for coat protein, the C-O, and then the P of protein, spelling COP. Um, and these COP uh, proteins, these are used for transport from the ER to the Golgi and then from one section of the Golgi to another. On the other hand, the clathrin coated pits will go from the Golgi to lysosomes or from the plasma membrane to endosomes. These uh, protein coats are also used to sort different molecules and they um, assist in the formation of the spherical vesicle itself um, as well as helping to avoid nonspecific fusion with other membranes. And so basically these coats are a way to make sure that the particular vesicle uh, stops at the correct target membrane. And so they also are used for regulating vesicle movement on microtubules. And you might recall that this is from motor proteins like kinesin or dynein. Let's look in a little more detail at the clathrin structure and how it helps to support this um, vesicle formation. So clathrin itself is what's called a triskelion or triskelin. Um, and so you can see these three different units that are brought together to make this sort of um, throwing star looking thing. And then they will assemble um, amongst each other to make this kind of soccer ball looking structure. 
Um, you don't need to know all the details of this. This is just to impress upon you how um, dense the structure is and how regular it is. And um, also to tell you a little bit about this uh, name, clathrin. So this is derived from a Latin term for lattice. Um, and basically, again, they form on the vesicle um, from the Golgi moving outwards and also from the plasma membrane moving inwards. I like to think of these clathrin um, protein structures kind of like the jungle gym and like, um, some kids' playgrounds. And so basically, this is a very um, rigid structure. It looks a little a little sketchy to me, but anyway, you can notice that some kids are inside the structure and some are outside. And just like that, there are certain proteins that are going to be found inside the structure and others that will be found outside. Unlike kids, which can move from one place to the other, we're going to find out that certain proteins are found in one place um, and other proteins are found in the other location. And the main thing is to see that this clathrin um, can form a very rigid structure and it can provide a lot of structure for that vesicle. Remember that the vesicle itself is a membrane, and so the membrane can be kind of flopsy. This is just a membrane bilayer and might not have a whole lot of shape. And so this uh, protein structure can help it to have a more uh, defined shape. Here are some electron microscopy images just um, that are showing vesicle budding. And in this top row here, we're checking out transmission electron microscopy. These are images of a vesicle um, that starts to bud. So here we see the membrane, and then it starts budding outwards here, continues to grow larger. And, um, and then eventually it will start to constrict down here and then form a separate vesicle. These are all pictures uh, from a chicken egg cell, in other words, an oocyte of yolk protein that is being brought into the cell. So this is actually outside, um, this is inside, you can't really tell that um, except for me saying that. Uh, and then on the bottom half of this image, uh, you can see this last panel here, this is a scanning electron microscopy image, uh, which is super cool looking honeycomb structures. Each of these is a different vesicle, and basically this is a clathrin cage that is forming um, as the vesicles are budding. And interestingly, these are vesicles which are budding from the surface of a skin cell. Here we're looking at the detailed steps of vesicle budding. This is from figure 15-20 in your textbook. Um, again, we see this vesicle starting to bud right here, um, and then over the process of, as we move to the right, we see this separate vesicle, which has um, blebbed off or budded off from this original membrane. So let's go through this step by step. Basically, we're checking out um, clathrin and how it can um, assist in vesicle formation. And in particular, there's a structure that's called the clathrin-coated pit. Um, and that's basically this part right here is um, the clathrin-coated pit. And so basically, it more is like it's blubbing outward more than it's like a, a pit coming inwards. But you could certainly imagine, so if this is being exocytosed, you could imagine the opposite situation where uh, if we turn flip everything else around, then it would be coming into the cell. And so the main part uh, here is to check out the multiple steps. For fun, I just had to put in one of my favorite movies, The Princess Bride, um, and so a joke about the pit of despair. Uh, if you've seen the movie, you may recall the scene where our main character, um, Wesley, has been brought into a situation um, where he's being tortured by this individual, and they call it the pit of despair. Anyway, that's just for fun. Um, so let's check out the detailed steps here. Note that everything is color-coded, as usual, um, on these lovely figures from your textbook. You should be able to label what these items are based on their location, um, and obviously the color as well as the shape is um, one of the things that should help you with that. So first off, in this process, we've got cargo molecules that are shown in red. Um, this is totally not detailed at all about what these cargo molecules are. They could be neurotransmitters, they could be proteins, they could be um, sugar molecules, really anything that can bind to a transmembrane receptor here, um, which is shown in blue, and they call a cargo receptor. Uh, when these uh, cargo molecules bind the cargo receptor, and sometimes it's a critical amount of them that need to be bound, then the membrane starts to uh, make this different structure here. And so on the opposite side of the membrane, one of the things that helps with that structure is that there are um, proteins called adaptin proteins. And so adaptin is this light green um, protein, and those proteins will bind directly to the cargo receptors. Then that helps to mediate clathrin binding, uh, which is the dark green, which is on the outside here. 
And so um, you could think of these adaptin proteins as a sort of adapter protein. And so clathrin being sort of the main feature as far as maintaining the structure of this vesicle and kind of driving the process of vesicle formation. Uh, but they can't do it without the adaptin proteins. Fun fact for you, so um, adaptin proteins, there are a variety of different adaptin proteins uh, that are present on different organelles, and each of these adaptin proteins plays a specific role in cargo selection, and so that's going to be different depending on the uh, organelle. So those are our first two steps here, one and two. Now the third step is that a protein called dynamin will um, bind to this growing vesicle bud and will start to constrict it. Um, dynamin is kind of exciting because it can bind to GTP. And so sometimes you'll see it referred to as dynamin GTP. In other words, dynamin is a, um, is a small GTP binding protein. Not that the GTP is small, but the protein itself is small, and it can bind GTP. And it's also a GTP ace, uh, which means that it can cleave a phosphate off of GTP. Um, and as you know from other classes and from this one as well, that can provide energy for a process to occur. Uh, cleaving GTP in this case will help to pinch the vesicle uh, from the membrane and um, liberate it, essentially um, separating this set of membrane lipids um, and other proteins that are along with it from this original uh, membrane here. Then this vesicle forms and, um, and the coat proteins are removed and then this naked vesicle, which we see here, um, can fuse with whatever the target membrane is. So it's gonna presumably bump around in the cytoplasm or potentially meet up with a motor protein and be dragged along um, a microtubule. And so I just drew in a couple of those other steps. So after um, budding, then the coat proteins are removed, which they call uncoating right here. Here we have our naked vesicle. And then um, in steps, which we'll see um, in the next um, topics, then this naked vesicle can potentially fuse with a target membrane. Hopefully you have not found this to be torturous, um, and maybe it's inspired you to want to watch a movie, Princess Bride, or another favorite one.